Hello, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate the Rocket Data Virtualization Studio along with ZOS Connect and its capabilities to create RESTful services with a JSON payload. What you're looking at now is the Rocket Data Virtualization Studio, and it shows the web services that I already have created. I have opened the employees and staff web services, and you see the various operations. At this point in time, both the Rocket Data Virtualization Server is up and running, and the ZOS Connect Server is up and running. And when they came up, all of the web service operations have been loaded into ZOS Connect and are ready to be executed with a RESTful request. To start out, I want to look at the employee's web service. So I'll close the staff web service for now. And the employee's web service has four operations, a get, an insert, an update, and a delete. And it is using the virtual table called employees that we've created. If you look at this virtual table, it is a virtual table over a vSAM file. And what we can do is once these operations are created, you can very easily run these from the EDS client restfully to ZOS Connect. So we can run the get all service by right clicking, choosing the ZOS Connect REST interface and execute query. It pulls up the RESTful request that it's about to execute, and you can say yes. And it runs that RESTful request to your default browser, and there is the return of information that came back from the request. You can also perform an, an insert, which is a post. And if we attempt to run this, you'll get a message window from DVS that says that a post is not allowed because the default verb in a web browser is get. So this needs to be run from any, any RESTful client. I'm using Postman. And, and that's because the, you have to have the JSON body built that shows the information for which you're going to insert. And I'm going to insert one with a key 99 with the name Ted and the title president. And if I run this, it runs successfully and says one row has been affected. If I perform the get all, you will now see that that record with key 99 has been added. You can also perform the update service, which would be a put. We can look at the JSON body and see that I'm going to update key 99 and change the name to TED2 and the title to President2. If you run it, one row is affected. You can run the get all, and you can see that the names have changed. We can also run the delete service. with the body of key 99 for the record for which it's going to delete. It tells you that one row is affected. And if you run the get all, you can see that key 99 is no longer out there. It's very easy to create these operations. And I can show you and demonstrate that. We'll create a new operation that's a get and it will be a get by title from the employees table. So we can name the web service operation as a REST web service. We name the table that we're going after 
I'm going to choose the employees virtual table. I'm going to name the operation, get title. And in the SQL statement, I'm going to select from employees where title equals question mark, which is the parameter marker for which we're going to supply the input on the request. When I say next, it knows the one input parameter marker, which I'm going to relabel as title, as that's what we'll be supplying. And we'll create the web service. There it's been created. And now if we execute the get by title and I'm going to rename the title that we're looking for as tech as I know there are four entries on the table that are have the title tech and you'll see that it returned an error 404 and that's because the ZOS connect server does not know about the new service that I've created in the DVS client but we can simply run a refresh command that will refresh all the services from the DVS client to the ZOS Connect server. And that's done by right clicking on the web service, ZOS Connect REST interface, and refresh. So now that that command has ran, it's refreshed all the services into ZOS Connect and the new employees get by title is present. So if we were to run that service again, you'll see that it runs fine and it returns only the four entries that have the title tech. Also, what you can do is from the DVS client, you can generate the .sar files or the service archive records that we can later then import into the API editor. That's done by simply choosing the web service, right-clicking, VOS Connect REST interface, and say generate SAR files. And when I did that, it actually generated the five SAR files for the operations in the employee's web service. Then we can go to the API editor and import those. So over here in the editor, I already have an employees project and I've imported the four of the operations, the get all, the insert, the update and delete, but I do not have the new get by title that we created. So we can simply import that SAR record for get by title. Here it is. And now we have that operation available. So if we go into the employees API editor, we can add a path for the get by title. I'll name the path. And give it the title parameter marker that we're going to supply as input. I know that it will be a get, so I will get rid of the post, the put, and the delete. I'll name the service from the service archive record that we imported, get by title. And then the mapping, I'll open the request mapping and I'll map the title from the request to the title of the JSON. I'll get out and save that. So now that that's been created, I can redeploy the project or the API to the ZOS Connect server.
I'm going to call it the update the existing APIs. And that's run successful. Now we can open the API in the Swagger UI. You can see the list of operations, the get by title, insert, update, delete. And if I run the get by title, and I'll need to input the title that I'm looking for, which is text, and the authorization. And if we run this, you'll see that it returned the same four records that have the title tax from the table. All right, also now what I want to show you is how we can perform a, a complex SQL statement that has multiple backend data sources from within the DVS client. So I'm going to enclose the employees table as we're going to now look at the staff web service. And I have an operation out here that's called get all and it's doing a left, it's getting all from a vSAM file and it's doing a left join against an Oracle table and an database table to get additional information. All these virtual tables exist up above. We have the staff vSAM file. And it's, there it is. And then we have the Oracle staff table. There it is. And we have the database staff table. And there it is. And if we look at the operation, the web service in the operation, you can see from the SQL statement that it's selecting various fields from the staff vSAM file. It's also selecting the salary from the Oracle table and the commission from the database table. And it has the left join from the vSAM to the Oracle and from the vSAM to the database table keyed on the ID. So if we run this, you see that it's returned information with the records off the vSAM file for the department, job, years, ID, and name, but it also returned the salary from the Oracle table and the commission from the database table. And if we wanted to import it, this into the API editor, we can simply generate the SAR file, there it's generated. We can go to the API editor. We can create a new project, VOS Connect API project called staff. There it is. We can import the SAR records database, there it is. We can name the path. We know that it's going to be a get, so I'll get rid of the others. We can pick the service, and there's nothing to be done in the input mapping and the request because there's no input needed. 
So we can save this. We can deploy the staff API to ZOS Connect. It's created successfully. There it is. So we can open staff in the Swagger UI. There it is. We can list the operations and we can execute it. And there it is with the same output with the salary coming from the Oracle table, the commission coming from the database table, and the other fields coming from the vSIM file. It's just that simple, and I hope this video has helped to explain the relations between the Rocket Data Virtualization Server and ZOS Connect. Thank you.